Hello, I'm going to present data from some measurements I made in fields where vertical tillage was being used to handle 100 bushel wheat residue in a wheat fresh pre-rotation. My name is Stuart Wiest and I am a soil scientist at the USDA Agriculture Research Service near Pendleton, Oregon. The farmers were Bob Johns, Chris Williams, and Larry Kopick. So the issue is dealing with crop residue in the intermediate rainfall zone of the Pacific Northwest. Residue from wheat yields over 80 bushels per acre can be difficult to seed into, even with modern no-till drills. Many farmers bale and remove residue, or mow. This is often followed by multiple passes with a heavy harrow. Removing residue removes nutrients and reduces surface cover that aids in water storage. So some farmers want to retain all their residue and keep it on top of the soil surface while reducing straw length to allow efficient seeding of the next crop. So what is vertical tillage? Great Plains and other manufacturers make straight disc equipment with fluted discs to chop wheat residue without penetrating the soil more than a few inches. Considered full width tillage, there is a question as to how this might affect soil erodibility and water infiltration when used in a direct seed system. Here's one of the fields. The stubble is harvested low to help manage long straw attached to crowns because vertical tillage leaves crowns attached to the soil. A vertical tillage pass in the fall, if needed, can help break down excess residue and germinate weeds. So here's our three-year data collection plan in 12 wheat pea fields near Athena and Adams, Oregon. We collected surface residue from a half square meter twice a year from each field. We also collected the residue in the top two inches of soil that could be retained on a half inch screen. We also measured ponded water infiltration rate in the spring of the final year. And we measured soil organic carbon, the top four inches and four to 12 inches. But I'm not gonna discuss carbon in this talk. So this slide shows the data on residue an average over three years. Crop residue on a soil surface and in the top two inches of soil was measured four times during the wheat pea rotation. The timing included critical erosion points. The first bar shows after seeding peas in the early spring and the third bar shows after seeding winter wheat in the fall. You can see the large amounts of residue was maintained in the top two inches of soil which is the blue part of the bar. But there was uh, also surface residue at all times. So there's a question, is the buried residue effective? If you have some surface residue and soil organic matter is high in the top inch, it probably is effective. But keep in mind that even just a half inch of low organic matter soil exposed to raindrops can cause a seal, and then you increase both evaporation and runoff. So here's ponded water infiltration data, measured in the spring of 2019. So ponded water infiltration was measured in the spring of the third year. Blue bars are fields planted to winter wheat. Red are pea fields recently planted and green bars are fields still in wheat stubble, not yet planted to peas. The locations were, uh, are shown here. Northwest is northwest of Adams. South of Athena has an S. And then even farther south of Athena are the slopes of Wild Horse Creek, so uphill a little bit. And then there's one marked annual and that was continuous recrop wheat up the Wild Horse Canyon. 
The last blue bar is a very interesting comparison we accidentally made in a neighbor's field. And it was turned out to be long-term no-till without vertical tillage. So the green bars show that before vertical tillage, we have the high infiltration rates we would expect in a well-developed no-till field. After residue management and the crops are planted, and we've been through the winter, which is when the infiltration rates were made, infiltration rates are going to be lower. An inch per hour is a good infiltration rate. But when we get down to half an inch, then we need to make sure that we have good residue cover and crop cover to prevent runoff. The really tall blue bar is that field planted to winter wheat every year, annual winter wheat. It's a steep field and it has no runoff and a great looking crop. And here's what the soil on that annual wheat field looks like. You actually get hard, it's hard to see the soil because there's about two inches of residue accumulated on the top. So conclusions. Observing over three years, we saw no runoff from these fields. And this included a snow melt event in late winter, the final year. And that was the same time that we did water infiltration measurements. I saw a field with terraces and, and uh, checked out the terrace bottoms uh, and I couldn't see any accumulation of water from that from the event. There were other fields in the region that had some problems with runoff and erosion. Ponded water infiltration rates were high, very high in fields not yet tilled and they're comparable to the no-till field. And this indicates that the soil properties are not being damaged or dominated by that shallow tillage. Infiltration rates are reduced following vertical tillage and seeding, as we would expect. And the retention of surface and near surface residue is likely the key component of good infiltration erosion control. So well, let me conclude with some general comments about farming in this area. The fastest way to destroy soil quality is soil erosion. So preventing erosion should always be a top priority. Tillage may prove important to controlling herbicide resistant weeds, but we need to do it carefully or we will sacrifice soil water in the process. Reducing tillage can help develop and maintain erosion resistance by accumulating high organic matter soil at the surface and maintaining residue cover. More surface residue equates to better water storage and quicker response to early fall rain. We have a lot of data on this. And finally, shallow vertical tillage can be used to size residue without a permanent decrease in infiltration rates if a large amount of surface residue is maintained. So if farmers minimize soil inversion and maintain surface residue, they'll have the best chances of surviving dry periods and maximizing yields, and at the same time maintain soil quality. So thank you, um, and I encourage anybody who has questions or comments or observations uh, to contact me.